This is the Aizan Educators and today we are going to discuss still on introduction to macroeconomics which marks our lesson two. So today we are going to discuss on national income. So what are our objectives? Our objectives are, we are supposed to ask us question, what is national income? And also you are going to, to talk about methods of measuring national income. There are three of them. So we'll start with the definition of national income. So basically, national income refers to the total monetary value of law of all final goods and services arising from the productive activities within an economy in one fiscal year. So what, what does this mean? It means that the national income refers to all the total all the total money, all the total monetary value of money of law of all final goods, not final goods and services. So when you sum up all the income obtained when the, maybe the final goods are sold and when the services are offered, the sum total of, of, of it all, that is what we call about, that is what we call national income. So basically, when you talk about the methods of measuring national income, there are three of them. There are, main, there are three methods of measuring national income. That is, we have the product or output or value added approach. You also have the income approach and lastly we have the expenditure approach. So when you are dealing with these methods of measuring national income, we are going to discuss each at a time. We are going to start with the first one, that is the product or we can call it output or value added approach. So when you talk about this approach, it measures the total monetary value for all the final goods. Note, all the final goods and services plus the value added from each industry in the private public or subsistence sectors. So all the total monetary value obtained from all final goods. You see, final goods, basically when you talk about final goods, you see there are some goods which are maybe they are intermediate. They are intermediate. It means that they are not yet final. You see, there are some goods which, which require further processing for them to become final. For example, when you're talking about tea leaves, tea leaves are just raw material. So they have to go undergo processing so that they can become as the final product. That is the, the tea leaves that we take. So those final products, the total monetary value of all those final products and services these services are the first services offered for example when you talk about services we talk about maybe you can talk about banking or maybe teaching those are services plus all the value added from each industry in the private that is the private the public or subsistence sector so the total monetary value that is what you were calling about the product or value added approach so this this approach only accounts for the value of final goods or services excluding the partially completed products. As I've said earlier, we exclude the partially completed products. These are projects which have not undergone maybe the final the final processing or the, the final manufacturing. They are still intermediate. They are still not final goods. So this approach only accounts for all the final products or services. So that basically is the product. It can also be called the output or value added approach. So the next the next approach for measuring national income is the income approach. So as the word states, this approach sums up all the incomes received by individuals and firms arising from their productive activities in the form of okay, salaries, we have wages, gross student profits, interest on capital, rental incomes and dividends. So salaries, these are these are maybe when you have employees, there are maybe salaries are paid monthly. So when you total when you sum up all the salaries maybe for all those people who are employed. We get to get we we are now we now get a figure which we can call national income. That is when you are basing on income approach. So next we have wages. So wages are different from salary. So we have said that salaries are these are the maybe the funds that one gets after working maybe after one month. But wages this is where maybe you you call someone and give the person maybe a task. Maybe that task can take maybe three hours. So after three hours, according to the job or the task that that person have have done. Will, will pay him or her wages. So gross profit, tendering profits. So gross profits, these are profits gained after you have detected uh, maybe maybe the cost the cost of running a business maybe after you have detected sales from maybe the cost of running a business that is the gross profit on trading profits you also have interest on capital for example if you have started a business or it is a company which have started a, a company maybe a, a, maybe a company or a business has started a business uh maybe you you have started with maybe one million one million shillings that is the capital so it means after you have after a period of time 
that one million will have gained some money that is what we call interest so when you calculate all the interest in all business or companies we are able to get the uh, a figure which you can call the national income when you are when you are dealing with the income approach so rental incomes these are the rent paid maybe with by the tenants then the, the dividends the dividends dividends refers maybe when maybe companies for example here in Kenya a company like Safaricom maybe it sells shares to maybe to the shareholders and so what they benefit from these shares are the dividends when you calculate maybe all the dividends obtained from maybe all the companies maybe in Kenya, we're able to get the national income maybe when you are, when you are dealing with the income approach. So payments or earnings for people who do not supply goods or services are excluded because payments or earnings for people who do not supply goods or services are excluded because they cannot, they cannot put them in the national the income approach. So we have the last three, we have the expenditure approach. As I have said, we have three of them. This is the last one, expenditure approach. So as the word states, expenditure, when you talk about expenditure, it means that you are spending some money. So this, this basically involves, this is an approach. Uh, this approach sums us all the market expenses incurred within the economy. You see, for consumption, expenditure, government expenditure. You see, government ex uh, spends money. Maybe the through the revenue which the government obtains, it spends that revenue maybe in running its operations. For example, it can pay its employees. It can also start up projects. It can also construct roads. It can also construct maybe schools. That is the basically what we call, we, talk, we talk about government expenditure. We also have private expenditure. This is where maybe private companies they have expenses. They have their own expenses. So they have to, uh, they have to spend money in their company. You also have the net export expenditure. So the next net, net export expenditure. When you're exporting things, we have to ex to have. There are some expenses which are incurred when you're exporting. So when you sum up all these, we are able to get the uh, the expenditure or the expenditure. Uh, all the expenditure approach you are able to get maybe a certain figure which can tell us the total national income so national income it can be the consumption expenditure plus maybe the private expenditure you also have the government expenditure plus the plus the net export expenditure so the formula for obtaining the 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 net the net export expenditure is the export minus imports as you can see in the formula below so basically those are the three main those are the three main methods of measuring national income. We have said that there is product or output or value added approach. We also have the income approach and lastly we have the expenditure approach. So on a nutshell, on a nutshell, today we have learned about uh, the objectives of, uh, of, we have done the objective that is the national income, we have defined what is national income, whereby you have said that national income refers to the total monetary value of law of all final goods and services arising from the productive activities within an economy in one fiscal year. One fiscal year means one year. And we have talk, we also talk, talked about the methods of national, measuring national income, that is the product or output or value added approach. Secondly, we have learned about the income approach, we have also given the examples, and lastly, we have done the expenditure approach. So that marks the end of our lesson two in macroeconomics, so we'll still continue with these lessons. Uh, if you find these lessons helpful to you, consider supporting by subscribing to this channel, that is the Aizan Educators. You can also comment, share and also hit on the notification bell so that once you upload a video, you will be the first one to be notified. Thank you very much for watching this video tutorial. See you on our next lesson. Thank you.